myself, Dr. Palni Raman, practicing pediatrician from Tindi Venom, Tamil Nadu. Today the topic for discussion is fever, think before starting an antibiotic. We all know fever is a very common problem faced by a physician in everyday practice. Usually by day one or day two, the cause of fever is not known. And even beyond that also, the cause of fever is very difficult sometimes. And in these early days, antibiotics are often overused or misused due to lack of clarity or lack of confidence, fear of missing bacterial infection or due to parental pressure and what not. So let us try to decode the approach to fever as the days progresses in this short lecture. Fever faced by a physician often has three clinical situations commonly. Clinical situation number one. Fever occurring in a vulnerable patient. What do I mean? Fever occurring in a neonate, less than three months of babies, or in a compromised host like a nephrotic syndrome child with on steroids, or a cancer chemotherapy child with uh, fever. So in all these situations, one has to start antibiotic as early as possible. You should not delay the antibiotic. But even in these situations, one has to send relevant investigations before starting an antibiotic. Clinical situation number two. This group of patients often presents with localized or generalized signs and symptoms, which gives a clue whether we are dealing with a viral or a bacterial etiology. For example, a baby with a child with fever with parotid swelling, we know mums, fever with vesicular rash, varicella, or a fever with running nose, watery eyes, and red throat, hacky cough, and many members in the family affected, in the community there is an epidemic of viral thing is going on, we all know we are dealing with a case of viral illness. In the same way, fever with suppurative otitis media, or a fever with tonsillopharyngitis, fever with cellulitis, fever with a pyoderma, or a fever with lymphadenitis, sometimes fever with the blood and mucus in the stool, that is dysentery. In all these settings, usually the cause is obvious. It is of bacterial etiology, no need to investigate. You can start directly appropriate antibiotics in these settings. Coming to clinical situation number three. Around one third of the febrile patients often present without localizing signs and symptoms. Usually they are called as fever without localizing signs and fever without focus in a small babies, as well as undifferentiated fever in an older child or adolescent. And this set of patients are the very difficult to deal with and pressurizing and challenging to deal with as the day progresses since we don't have any clues. As a rule of thumb, by day one or day two, in a fever without localizing signs, in a not so sick looking child, with stable vitals, we can very well wait with only with paracetamol and not doing any investigation or not giving any antibiotics. As the days progresses, after 48 hours, if the localizing signs emerge well and good, if the localizing signs doesn't emerge, one can get upon certain clinical clues which gives a clue whether we are dealing with a viral or a bacterial etiology. What are those clinical clues? The onset duration progress, response to paracetamol, how the child behaves in between the febrile spikes, as well as the trend of the fever as the days goes on. For example, in a viral fever, usually it is high to start with, responds well to paracetamol, and the child plays well in between the febrile spikes. And as well as by day 4 or day 5, the trend of the fever starts going down. The fever starts trending going down, that is initially all the day, then only afternoon and night, and finally only in the evening, and as the child by fifth day, the temperature completely settles off. In contrary, in case of bacterial infection, there are two types of things. For example, one set of patients will have high fever at onset, for example, in a case of acute bacterial tonsillopharyngitis, or in case of, for example, severe otitis media, the fever will be high to start with. Or in certain cases, like uh, bacteremic viral infection, bacteremic bacterial infections in the form of typhoid, one can have an insidious onset of fever with a step ladder pattern 
in increase in the fever by day 4 day 5 the fever spikes increase and becomes a continuous fever and the child responds poorly to paracetamol and the child will be sick in between the fever and the temperature goes on as the days goes on this gives a clear cut clue we are dealing with a bacterial etiology even after applying this clinical clues at times you will not be able to come to a conclusion so by day 3 day 4 is the time to look upon the investigations what investigations certain basic investigations like urine cbc and x-ray chest which is available throughout the country is enough to sort it out in all these patients first and foremost is the urine examination to rule out hidden uti in a small babies after ruling out uti next one should look upon the cbc cbc can show high counts normal counts or low counts if the counts are high for example, showing a neutrophilic leukocytosis, one should think upon there is somewhere active inflammation is going on. In the early days, it will be usually infective inflammation and we should try to search for the site of active inflammation. You will do urine to rule out pyrodephritis. You will do chest x-ray to rule out a pneumonia because sometimes pneumonia can be missed easily in a small children. But by clinically so only you will have this clinical clues only by chest x-ray and sometimes for example you should also look upon mainly a bone and joint infection you can do sometimes septic arthritis and ultrasound too so by definitely sorting out the site of active bacterial infection then only you should start antibiotics appropriate antibiotics depending on the site of bacterial infection here too there is a caveat not all neutrophilic leukocytosis is equal to bacterial infection and neutrophilic leukocytosis is not 100% specific for bacterial infection why because sometimes even adenoviral infection can behave like a bacterial infection presenting with neutrophilic leukocytosis so one has to be very specific before starting antibiotic and particularly when there is neutrophilic leukocytosis you should be sure about what is the infection he is dealing with before starting antibiotic so the message is neutrophilic leukocytosis is not equal to bacterial infection okay coming to day 5 and day 6 i should try to look upon whether the localizing signs and symptoms emerge for example one should have easily missed an hidden eschar earlier so one should strip from up above downwards and look in the hidden parts any eschar is there mainly for a typhus and in the same way subtle signs like a splenomegaly and a coated tongue and a sick looking child and the trend of the fever which, which is going day by day above so all this gives a clue that one is dealing with a case of bacterial infection even now one has to use the same basic investigations to sort it out after ruling out UTI the CBC showing high counts means mostly neutrophilic leukocytosis will give us a clue that one is dealing with a conventional bacterial infection in the form of pyelonephritis, pneumonia, bone and joint infection, sometimes occult infection in the form of hidden abscess. One has to be easily sorted out by doing an ultrasound abdomen, etc. By day 5, day 6, this is the time one should think about after ruling out bacterial infection one should think about start thinking about Kawasaki disease a non-infective inflammation whenever there is neutrophilic leukocytosis okay what to do if there is leukopenia when the counts are low less than 5000 or 4000 one should think about all the tropical fevers the tropical fevers in the form of malaria dengue typhoid and typhus usually they present with leukopenia and thrombocytopenia and the timing of the thrombocytopenia will give a clue for example, in the case of malaria and dengue, the thrombocytopenia appears in the first week by day 3, day 4. If there is a leukopenia with a thrombocytopenia high hematocrit, the CBE is diagnostic in the form of dengue. Apart from dengue, the CBC gives the direction. Only in case of dengue, it gives the diagnosis. In all other cases, it gives the direction in which direction we should go about. If the, if the CBC gives the direction that it is a case of tropical fever, Based on the clinical clues, one should go for blood culture if you are suspecting typhoid. One could go for IgM ELISA scrub if, we, if you are suspecting scrub typhus. So in the same way, the CBC gives a clear-cut clue. 
This is the way one should have a thoughtful approach when uh, uh, dealing with the case of fever by day 5, day 6. By this type of thoughtful clinical approach with the basic clinical clues and investigative clues, one should definitely easily separate a 10% bacterial process from a 90% viral process and avoid unnecessary antibiotics, thereby contributing to rise in bacterial resistance in the community. So, this is the way one should think before starting an antibiotic in a case of fever. So, everything is clear now. By day 1, day 2, in a case of fever without focus, no need to start antibiotic, no need to investigate. By day 3, day 4 and day 5, day 6, one should rely upon the clinical clues as well as the basic investigative clues and the direction the CBC gives and further proceed. So, this is very easy to apply in day-to-day -day practice and we can have, have a rational antibiotic therapy in day-to-day -day practice. Thank you, one and all.